Hello and welcome to the news this week. Now first up is the sad article that NASA have announced the end of the Opportunity mission uh, with a final attempt to re-establish communication with the rover. Now about eight months ago the solar panels were thought to have been irretrievably covered in dust uh, during a massive uh, sandstorm and they were hoping that potentially some of those dust particles would uncover themselves and bring the rover back to life but NASA have now finally given up on the poor little rover. Now next up we're actually returning to Ultima Thule. Now we covered this I think it was two weeks ago where we looked at some of the new images that had been released and examined some of the crater marks and the, the scarring on the surface. Now this week they've released even more images and interestingly enough what it shows is that rather than the two or the, the, the two objects which are kind of stuck together being spheres in fact what it appears is that they are very much pancake shape. The good news is that we haven't even got to the best images of Ultima Thule yet. Uh, it, when the New Horizons mission passed within I think it was about three and a half thousand kilometers of the object those images of the closest flyby we are still awaiting those so hopefully we will come back to this article in future weeks. Now next up is a very interesting article about life on Earth. Now we all know that life started as simple microbes and bacteria and we know that it started about three and a half billion years ago but the big question is did that life struggle to survive or did it thrive? And this new study conducted by a certain number of scientists looked at some of the um, excretions that these uh, microbes would produce and from it was able to estimate uh, that in fact rather than barely surviving these early creatures were thriving. The reason that this is important is obviously if it was easy for life to actually originate on earth then it implies that life probably exists in many different places across our universe and it will help us to understand the conditions under which these microbes will thrive. Now next up is an article about a newly discovered planet that could potentially host primitive life. Now it was presented in a conference last week and the team said that the planet known as Barnard B might have microbes or other simple life in its environment as long as there is lots of thermal activity within the planet itself. Now this would theoretically provide enough energy for life to survive. Now, this is particularly exciting given the fact that the planet is only six light years away from Earth, making it one of the closest worlds outside of our own solar system. Now there is another potentially habitable planet at Proxima Centauri, roughly four light years away from us, which is also coming under scrutiny. We all know that the Earth has a magnetic field, but in fact the Moon has had one too, and a recent study has done some calculations and has actually extended the known lifetime of what they call the lunar dynamo by at least one billion years. Now the problem is that this requires an extraordinarily long-lived power source like core crystallization or precession and the problem is that no single dynamo mechanism proposed thus far is capable of explaining the strong fields inferred by this period while also allowing the dynamo to persist in such a weakened state for so long. And to me that kind of begs the question, is there some electrical effect that might explain this? And we end on these beautiful images of Neptune and Uranus. So the first image here we see is of a cloud system on Uranus and the final one is of a vast storm system taking hold on the northern pole of Neptune truly stunning images that prove that our planets in our solar system are dynamic and active. And that brings us to the end of the news this week. I hope you've enjoyed the stories. As always, be brave, be curious. The truth is waiting for us. Until next time.